Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. This is the Sales at Work episode 11 review, and with me as always is Jacoby, aka Kobe. Welcome, Kobe. Hi, thanks for having me, as always. I say as that always. like I'm not always here. As always, and as always, Tori is unable to, uh, to join us. She's As off. always, Tori is unable <laughs> to join us? That's, I just, I just say as here. always in front of everything, which she, makes it moot. It does, so, so everything is not like, as always, like, that's nothing. Yeah, but I, I do it anyways. It just, it's the irony of it. I enjoy oh, it. Oh, see, it's the humor goes right over my head sometimes. It's you gotta have a high IQ for the show, Koei. And I don't. I don't have it. I just I just sit here and and I wait to talk about cells at work, which is what we are going to do. Oh, goody! Uh, episode eleven, the heat stroke one. Uh, so I mean, should we just get into it? Just jump right in. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so cells at work, episode eleven, the heat stroke one. Which is the official title? <laughs> is, that, is that is that what they say? The heat stroke one, the, the one with the, the where the heat stroke hit the body. That's I would think that's the name of it. Exactly. Uh, except it, it's translated, of course. Yeah. Roughly. So the episode begins with the cells. Uh, they are hot. So and, hot. And we get to see a function of the red blood cells that we've never seen before, which is uh, basically their job right now is to. I think it's like to go to the go to the epidermis go to the skin essentially and just like walk like to regulate the the temperature of the body because the body's getting super hot and the body's running out of water yeah it, it increases it it helps it so like, that's a cool function i like this episode was very educational more so than other episodes like, i actually learned a lot about the t- titular disease yeah so did i uh and it is it is cool to see the the cells do something other than walk around and transport oxygen <laughs> instead we get to see them walk around and be hot hot and that's the thing because the all these cells in this body are a bunch of bitches anyway and making them all hot <laughs> made them even more bitches like they complained even more so than they normally do i would complain if it was hot i would complain too but they already complain an ungodly amount about like literally anything bad that happens to them ever so it's like oh that's just this is like a it's sure this is like a justified problem but it's like ah oh, they're even worse than they normally are <laughs> Just another day in the red blood cell life. What a horrible existence. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they basically everyone's hot. Everyone's complaining. Um, and when they expect, uh, what is it called? Hydrolysis? I don't know. Hydrosis, basically, yeah. Hydrosis. When they expect the sweat to erupt from the body to cool everything down, it doesn't happen. So suddenly we're in an emergency situation where it's too hot there is no cooling mechanisms in place, and all the cells can do really is suffer together as they, as the red blood cells walk around and regulate the temperature. I thought that was a really rad opening scene of just like running for like one of those disaster horror movies, which is I think when cells at work does best is when they when they like mimic a disaster movie with like all the scientists running through like the the reservoirs is like this is empty like and they go to like mm-hmm. quick hit the reserves it's like oh this is empty too like oh go- oh no may God have mercy on our souls. <laughs> yeah. I, I completely agree. I enjoy this episode a lot, uh, specifically for that reason. Um, this isn't your typical Monster of the Week episode, though there is a Monster of the Week to speak about. Um, but in this one, it seemed that the enemy was more so the environment than the actual bacteria that was invading the body. And sure enough, there is a ba- there is a bacteria that invades, and his name is Bac... Ba- fuck. Bacilli... B- Bacillial serum or something. I yeah, want to call him the, back the, fuck b- b- Bacillus. <laughs> back fuck. Yeah, Bacillus. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. Um, I'm gonna call him the squid cell because yep. he's squiddy. He's very squiddy. He squids around. So the squid cell. I, I also enjoyed the squid cell because, as opposed to trying to overtake the white blood cells with brute force, he is a very cutting kind of enemy in that he just he basically just runs away. And takes advantage of the situation, which is everyone is in a state of disarray. Everyone is basically in this disaster situation. So he is able to take advantage of that by hiding amongst the huge group of red blood cells. I think what they're saying is like he's he's taking advantage of the red blood cell flow to kind of get away from all the white blood cells. Yeah, I I like how he wasn't like the cause of the disease or like a specific heat stroke disease. He was just a germ that was as just taking advantage of the situation, which is something we haven't seen before. Usually like the, whatever the germ is, is related to, you know, the huge thing that's affecting the body. But this was just a normal one. She's like, Oh shit. Now's my time to shine. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta move through these red blood cells and nobody will ever know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I really liked about him. And 
And uh, this is one of the very few bacterium that, I guess, overpower neutrophil effectively. Um, essentially, we see uh, the body is in a state of disarray, and squid cell just straight up chucks neutrophil off a cliff. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the fight. That's like the resolution of the fight, until the very end, of course. But um, yeah, everyone's kind of panicking and stuff. I like, I do like, uh, I don't know if this is a visualization of like the brain or something, but like mm-hmm. there's like a command center and then the everyone, and then the commander kind of just walk, like they're, they're in like an emergency that, room that, situation. I think those are the sweat glands. That's, that's like the sweat system. Okay. So yeah. So the sweat system, they're, they're in panic mode and the captain of the sweat room, I guess, walks out and he walks back in and he's wearing like, <laughs> like rain dance garb and he starts like praying for the rain. And then I, one one goo's like, ah, oh, shit, the, the captain's gone crazy. <laughs> crazy. I will say, I think that is one of the funniest jokes this show has ever done. I, I love agree. that joke. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> because at first I thought when he went back there and he heard the, I thought he shot himself. <laughs> like, I thought he was like, oh, he's like, he's like, oh, there's nothing we can do. Okay. So I thought he, I thought he died. And then that he came out in that tribal guard, that, that, so in that beat, which is like, oh, oh my God, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he just started yeah. doing the rain dance. It's hilarious. I, and, um. I also like how, okay, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'll ask this question. Would you have preferred it if he just killed himself? Because you like dark shit. You like it when people die. No, the rain dance joke was hilarious because it's just like the super serious commander. Then he just like okay. comes out in, in travel guard and he can't get through the door because the, yeah. the, the <laughs> stick on his back is preventing him. So he has to crawl through. It's great. Everything about that was perfect. Perfect. Okay. Better than him shooting himself. Okay. Better than him shooting himself. Very, all right. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it seems that all was lost when suddenly the dark sky parts and rays of sunshine start streaming through the sky and what appears to be a gigantic needle pokes through the heavens and gushes water everywhere. Which, first of all, if you're hoping for rain, I would think that dark clouds is a good thing and that the sky parting and rays of sunshine <laughs> going through would be a bad thing. It's so like, I was like, this is the opposite of what I, yeah. I actually did the sun dance, not the rain dance. <laughs> my bad, guys. Exactly. I thought that, uh, I mean, I knew what they were going for, but in my head, that's what I was going, that's what was going through my head. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, water starts gushing through the needle, and essentially, this is the visualization of, uh, basically, they're, they're, they're pumping fluids intravenously like through a needle and yeah. just starts hydrating everyone and everyone's really happy and 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 uh i love the follow the follow-up to the joke of the guy doing the rain dance is that his his uh his employees or whatever are like captain you did it the rain dance works yeah it was all him he was the one who did it <laughs> yeah he's like ah good thing we didn't give up hope um yeah. So yeah, everyone's and that was really an interesting happy. solution to the problem. Like that's something we haven't seen before. It's like this was one of the rare instances where the body doing its job just completely failed. Like there was nothing the body could do. It took an outside source in order to replenish and help. Well, actually, it was, it's like much. It's very similar to uh, the uh, the steroid when when they took for the nasal passages for that's the allergies. Mm-hmm. But then that 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 showed like the negative side about how the outside stuff for your body really hurts. Like the the stuff in your body, like it completely destroys everything. This one was positive through and through you know they would have been screwed completely otherwise like who knows what would have happened if they didn't get that iv injection yeah it was a episode that was completely uh an episode where the body was in a situation that was completely outside of its control and it couldn't do anything to fight back essentially yeah and i liked it and much like the allergy episode um which i think is also a really good episode it uh it was very entertaining and um educational and fresh uh like i said the the show typically goes into a monster of the week kind of thing which i enjoy but i i enjoyed that this one was another one of those ah shit the body can't really do anything uh so i guess we are fucked and then we takes like you said an outside solution uh i was half expecting there to be like i thought this would be cool i thought it'd be cool if like angels started pouring out of the needle (laughs) And like yeah. they were like angels were like distributing water bottles to everybody, and then I don't know they fly back into the needle or whatever. But I yeah, much they... like how the pill was like a robot that destroyed yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, a deadly robot Terminator thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the episode uh, ends off with white blood cell being regenerated. How did He's white fine. blood like? It's, it's funny. It's like, it's like white blood cell fell off that cliff way before the water hit anything. So what did he land on that 
that helped him survive. That's what I want to know as well. But I like to imagine that he fell down a cliff that was so fucking tall that the water poured <laughs> down and created a huge pool for him to land in, which made him completely fine. Like which while it was make happening, sense at all. the water flowed through and he landed on it. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that works. I, it, I mean, it doesn't make sense, like, gravity-wise, because he would fall first for sure before the water. But, like, whatever. This is a human it's body. Fine. Gravity doesn't exist yeah. in a human body, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. If, if Tori was here, would you think she would complain about the amount of narrator in this episode? Yes. Because there was a ton of narrator. And usually, sometimes I'm on the same page as her. But this time, I thought the narrator was helpful because it was actually teaching me something I found really interesting. Like, I learned all about heat stroke. And, and like how the body reacts to it, and I thought that was really cool. Definitely, and I don't um, because of the nature of the 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 characters being within the body. I don't know how they would be able to educate us story wise, like through the dialogue or whatever, because they don't know what's going on. They wouldn't be able to be like, "Oh crap, this is this is a heat stroke, and we're fucked because we, ha- we don't have enough water." I think it's more entertaining that they don't know what's happening. And so if they were the ones explaining it, it would kind of devalue the educational moment or no, it would, it would devalue the, the, the fact that like, that they're in a dangerous situation, you know, like the fact that they're in an unknown, uh, kind of situation makes it entertaining for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so take that Tori, take that Tori. Ha ha. We attack her when she's not here to defend herself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, overall, this was a pretty fun episode. I mean, it was a light episode. It was it was pretty straightforward. It was it went by quick because of how entertaining it was. Like I thought it was like I thought, wow, is the episode already over? But I mean, it, it flew through everything. Yeah, I think this would definitely be in my top top three episodes. Top I don't, three. Yeah, I think top three. Cancer, this one, and I guess the allergy one. Yeah, I think the, the allergy one is the closest comparison it has, so I was going to ask you how those two compare. I think I like the cedar allergy a little bit more because I liked uh, uh, Memory Cell and his signs of apocalyptic oh, yeah. doom, like about about like the prophecy. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. Um, and that definitely had more resolution. comedic value. Yeah, but but again, the joke with the captain turning coming coming out in rain gear is just the best thing about the show <laughs> I remember in some time. Yeah, um, I don't know. I have, I don't remember much of the allergy episode except for the that uh, the the robot. But I do remember it was good. Okay, so now, but the the but the, the big question is when white blood cell and red blood cell first saw each other and they both started blushing. Yeah. Okay. So I fucking knew you were gonna bring this up. Yeah. Because I saw that and I was like, ah, oh, shit. I'm not gonna hear the end of it now. You're not. Uh, so they, what did you what did you read that moment as, Jeff? Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I I could definitely see that it was uh he was like, oh shit, you know, he was blushing because she was dressed down and stuff. But the way that it was cut, it could be read either way. And I, you know what, I am st- I'm gonna tell you right now, I do lean towards yeah, okay, he he was probably blushing and stuff because he saw you know red blood cell with their sleeves off, you know, their sleeves Ooh, down, scandalous, That's scandalous, you know, showing some skin. So I will lean in that direction, but I still want to give air to the other side of the argument because, like I said, the the way it was cut, it wasn't like a, typically what it would what it would happen is like you'd see white blood cell like oh his eyes would pop open and they would cut to red blood cell and just her torso portion, mm-hmm. but the way it happened more was just like he he was like whoa and then like the like purple stuff started squiggling around him, and then it, it panned back out to showing both of them in the frame. And he was all sweaty and stuff. So it kind of seemed to me that it could also just be like, oh, shit, it's really hot. And suddenly I'm noticing it as I killed that cell. Yeah, I I, I was just kind of chiding you a little bit there. But I do agree that there is you could make the value valuable explanation, the, the valid explanation that he was suffering the beginnings of heat stroke because he suffers that at the end where he like passes out because of all the clothes he was wearing. So it's not just because he sees red blood cell like that. It's just because he ran, ganked a cell, and now he's kind of out of it a little bit because he's suffering the effects as well. And and that whole, like, visualization where, like, there's a purple background, it's all squiggly, squiggly, that didn't seem to me like a... It didn't seem like a, oh, wow, sexy red blood cell. It seemed more like a, fuck, it's hot. 
I am in, I'm distressed right now kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I see that. It, it definitely did not lean heavily one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I could also see, because Red Blood Soul made the comments of like, hey, you're so hot. Uh, you should dress down a bit. Uh, and that could be like a... I was hoping he would, and then we really got to reveal that like his body is like really scrawny or something. like Or like he has like tattoos or something. <laughs> he's got tattoos. Yeah, he's tatted up. You think he's a badass? Well, he's a badass. Yeah, he is a badass. He's but a he's badass he... because of how unbadass like he is in his personality because he's just straightforward. See it? See yep, a germ? That's still true. a germ. He's yep. He's uh, he's honest. He's reliable. Does his job. He's yeah, uh, he's he what you want in a white When he gets to kind of completely uh, um, go crazy on a germ that's that, that <laughs> beat him up, and because he he destroyed that germ. Yeah, like, I don't think we should go near him right now. mm Hmm. I also like that little cute moment where, like, the platelets were, like, hot, and they're trying to reach for the tea, and then white blood cells like, I got you. I got some tea. I don't know why. I was struck with the sense of, like, I just thought the way that was shot when he took the the, uh, um, buckwheat tea, that he was just going to drink it all himself. (laughs) I don't know why. It's like, that's totally out of character. But it's just like, he took it, he paused. And then he handed it to them. I was like, oh, yeah. he's totally going to down it all. That whole moment where the platelets are reaching for the tea and the white blood cell approaches them to when he actually gives them takes way too long. Like, there's so many cuts in between that. There's even, like, a still frame. It's like a shot where, like, it's just his face and he's smiling down at them. Yeah. It's like it's kind of, like, ambiguous. Like, what's he going to do? Is he is he going to give them the tea? Is he going to kidnap these kids? I don't fucking know. <laughs> that was the real mystery behind this episode. Not anything about heat stroke or anything like that. It was just like, what's what's he going to do with that buckwheat tea? <laughs> what is he going to do with the buckwheat tea? Uh, yeah, so I, I like this episode a lot. Uh, what, do, what do you think? Do you have anything nice, else to add? No, it was a nice, fun episode. It's I'm getting into the groove where this is exactly what I want from an episode of this show, which is perfect because now the show is ending. <laughs> like now That's we're just, true. Yeah. So it looks like next week is a part one of the two part finale. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to probably change up the format. But I think at at the end of it, um, looking back on the show, it's like it's these types of episodes that I'm going to think that I like the best. For sure, it'll it'll it makes the series worth it. It made it worth it to watch it all for these little these really good episodes. Uh, also, I wanted to say one more thing. It was interesting in the preview that um, Neutrophil called Red Blood Cell Senpai. Uh, or I didn't was notice that, that. Was he talking to Red Blood Cell? I don't know. But he he said something like, oh, uh, I wonder if she is up for the task or whatever. Hmm. And um, so the, the two-part finale is hemorrhaging. And hemorrhaging, I think, has to do with Red Blood Cells. So maybe Red Blood Cell is tasked to do something outside of what she's usually doing, which, hey... Hey, Maybe some character development. You like that shit? Oh, I love that shit. So if it if it ends on that note, I have. A, I mean, I'll be so happy. Yeah, it, it very well could. It, it very well could end up to where red blood cell uh, does something that saves white blood cell, or does something that kind of is more amazing than what white blood cell does in some way. Uh, so yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the finale. Cool, and and we'll be back, of course, to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want to anything else you want to say? You want to sign us off? I'll sign us off. I've never done this. I think I've done it a few times. All right. Anyways, this is <laughs> Nerd Blaze. Uh, you, if you like listening to this episode review, you can go back and listen to the other ones if you want. Uh, or if you have any interest in sports animes, we have a podcast called Anime of Ricochet in which we talk about sports anime, and it's a very in-depth and lengthy discussion. Our episodes usually last about an hour and a half, so if you get the time. Go ahead and download them on our Libsyn or anywhere where podcasts can be found or find them on our YouTube channel at NerdBlaze. How'd I do, Kobe? I thought you did great. A minus. Thank you. Thank you. A minus. I'll fucking take that. Yeah. Can't, can't expect an A plus on the first time. No way. Of course. No, you got, you got to work up to that. Yeah. Maybe the second time. Yeah. Maybe next time. All right. Cool. Thank you all very much. Thank you for listening. See ya.